Hey everyone, uh, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and a variety of other platforms when you search for my name or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm really excited to be back this week to be sharing you, with you a little bit about my third grade lesson plans um, and to share especially an in-depth look on how I teach students to um, create their own notes and rests. And this is something that you can do with a lot of different ages. It just happened to fall with my third grade this year. Um, well, it, you know, it just happened to fall with them to do a little bit more in depth this year. And I wanted to just share about that um, with you tonight. Uh, before I do that, um, I'm excited to be on this end of things. <laughs> These last few weeks have been just so ridiculously busy. Um, I, a few weeks ago, was really rushing to get um, a whole set of Valentine's Day themed centers finished. And I got a lot of those finished. I'm glad I did because you know, I, uh, a couple weeks ago, I was able to go to um, Collinsville, Illinois and do um, a professional development day for them about centers. And one of the things that, that always comes up is, you know, this seems like a lot of work. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so um, one of the things I always tell people as I'm finishing up that, that workshop about centers is, centers are really exciting, centers are great. Don't plan on doing them on Monday <laughs> because it takes a little bit of work, it takes a little bit of prep. And that's one of the things that um, I hope that people took away from this session, um, that you know they have all these great resources and ideas now, but it's gonna take a little bit of time to implement them. And that's why I wanted to get those Valentine's Day centers out so early, because uh, it just takes a little bit of time to print them and laminate them and cut them out and, and all of that sort of thing. So um, that was something I rushed on. Also, like I mentioned I was presenting at Collinsville, so that took a little bit of prep and time and the notes and everything. Um, and then this last weekend, was just absolutely so much fun. I was able to go to the Missouri Music Educators Association State Conference um, at Tantara Resort. And um, it, it was just so much fun sharing. I did two sessions there. Um, and if you've if you've been following any of my Instagram or Facebook accounts, you probably have seen some photos. You may have even seen a little bit about the story of the blue whale puppet that I purchased. It is the largest puppet I have purchased to date which I think is fitting considering the blue whale is the largest animal in the world. But um, I had so much fun and I was able to get it home. I didn't even have to check the whale, so that's very exciting. Um, and if you check back through my uh, social media history, you'll see I got it home. But I am I have still yet to decide what I'm gonna name her, the blue whale, and I have a couple really good ideas, but if you have any ideas about what to name my blue whale puppet, um, you should, you know, leave them either in the comments here or send me a message. I would love to hear your thoughts on the blue whale puppet and what I should name it. Um, and like I said, there are pictures on Instagram and on Facebook uh, for you to um, see so you can see what she looks like before you give your amazing idea. Okay, well, this week um, on the video, I'm gonna share a little bit about, well, I'm gonna share all my K through five lessons for the week. I'm on a new rotation, so I'm gonna share those updated lesson plans so you can sort of see a sketch of everything I'm doing in all my grades. And then I'll do a deep dive on third grade. And um, I have some really fun props this week, <laughs> things that I'm actually using in my lesson that I'll um, share with you when we get there to third grade. So uh, let me just jump right in. As always, if you have questions or comments, uh, I love seeing those. Um, in the feed. I can't always react to them on my phone and my iPad while I'm talking, um, but it's great to see all of your questions. I try and go back to them at the end of the video and try and answer them as best I can. But what's even better is sometimes someone will post a question. I'll see this a lot on Facebook, not so much on Instagram, but I see on Facebook someone posts a question and someone else answers it within a minute or two after. And that's so cool to see because, you know, this is I hope a community of music educators and me doing this video is just an extension of that. But just like I saw this last weekend at, at Missouri Music Educators, it's just, we crave that time to talk and to communicate and to share ideas. And, and we're really actually very good at that as music teachers, um, but we just don't get a lot of chances to do that. So when you watch this video, and I hope you're getting something out of it as far as the lesson ideas, when you share and give your input, that makes this so much more of a community and less just me sitting in an empty room talking to my phone. Um, but it, it's just so great to see that happen. So um, thanks so much for leaving your questions and comments. And if you're watching this later on YouTube or somewhere else, um, please leave your comments there as well. 
Cool. Well, let me just jump in. My kindergarten lessons for the week, it's sort of an extension of what we did in the previous lessons. And two weeks ago, I shared all of my K through five lessons then. It was in the previous rotation. Um, but it starts out with the students coming in, they do our circle song, we do our echoing. Um, and then we <clears throat> we jump back in with Solfege. We, done, we learned so and me. And so we do a little bit of rehash of that, um, saying do the hand signs. And one of the things that I learned when I was doing my ORF levels, um, and or if people aren't known as much for Solfege as maybe the Kodai folks, but one of the things that my instructor really stressed was when you're teaching, you know, the, the signs, you should make sure to teach with both hands and then, to, you know, to do one and then to do the other, but also to do both hands together because especially if you're doing it with a younger grade, um, you know, there's all this research about um, how students can do you know, one side or the other and, and asking them to do two at a time really does stimulate their brain. Um, there's all this research about the midline of your body and how asking students to cross over and do things, it, it really, it's harder at a younger age, but really stimulates their brain. And so asking them to do the two hands together is a great thing, um, just, as, just as good as asking them to do it separate. I am so bad though, I always usually just start out using one hand to demo and that's just, natural for me it's what i've normally done but um i've been really trying to press myself to do two hands at a time just to give um to give that encouragement for students and to see if they can do that too so if you have if anyone's a kodai person and they have thoughts about that i would love love if you would leave them in the comments so i can hear um it, at kodai levels do you do just one hand or are you told to do two hands how does that work and i know at kodai levels there's some things where you're doing one with one hand and one with the other so don't scare me with that, but um, <laughs> I'd love to hear what you do with, with students. Um, we do Will, Will and He Had Seven Sons. I did that in the previous lesson. Um, I changed the name to Will Yum just because it's more of a hassle to keep correcting my kids to say Willem, so I just say William. Um, and we get to give each of his seven sons um, a job and a thing that they do. So Willem, he had seven sons, which you can find that online pretty easily. It's a, it's a fun little song. In fact, I might have linked that in the notes um, you know, for any of these videos, I have my, my recap page on my blog. And, um, I think that I put a link to the notation on that recap page. If you're looking for it in the Facebook live feed, it should be at the bottom of the caption for this video. And it should say like musical Mondays recap. And if you're watching on Instagram, it should be in my LinkedIn profile where you can click the musical Mondays recap. But it, on that page on my blog, I have, I hope, I think a link to the, the, um, sheet music for that song, Willem, he had seven sons. And then um, Willem's, one of Willem's sons is Willem Jr. And so we, and he's Wee Willy Winky, which we also learned in the previous lesson. So we just bring that back. Wee Willy Winky's gonna come back later and I don't want them to forget that poem, but it's not really a focus of this lesson. So I just tie it in as he's Willem Jr., William Jr. And so he goes by Wee, Wee Willy Winky. So we just run through that a couple times. We go back over to the xylophone. Um, in the last lesson, we did um, a xylophone exploration with the poem Jack and Jill went up the hill. All my kids actually know that this year. I think they must be teaching that one. They don't usually actually at my school, um, but uh, we do a Jack and Jill exploration. I did a, an entire live video about this last year, and so I have linked that in the, in the video notes um, if you wanna see the whole process, the lengthy process. But um, basically, it's just an exploration up and down that matches the words of the poem. What we do today that's different from the previous day, in the last day, we just had a blue mallet for Jack, a yellow mallet for Jill, and they went up and down a xylophone. In this lesson, um, they get really fed up with that, that hill because they keep falling down it. So I pull out a different uh, xylophone. I pull out an alto xylophone. Oh, they think that's very exciting because it's bigger in a different hill. They keep falling down that. So then eventually I pull out a soprano metallophone and then I do an alto metallophone. So I really get through four instruments, both soprano and alto xylophone and soprano and alto metallophone. They think that is just like the coolest thing. Um, and we get to go, go through and by this point, the kids know the routine for the, the song, so each kid gets a chance to do the exploration up and down the instrument, but it, it doesn't ever get to the point where kids get antsy because I'm switching out the instruments every three or four kids, so no one feels like, eh, this is boring, I'm gonna act out or be crazy. They're always sort of engaged and interested because either they're saying the poem or they're doing the mallets and they're doing it on a, on a, a fun new instrument. And then we transition over to my octopus puppet who teaches them this silly little song I wrote called Fish, Fish, Little Fish. But the fun thing is I have this folk manis 
octopus puppet that fits on my hand and each one of my, well, five of my fingers, my five fingers become five of his eight tentacles and um, the other three just sort of roam freely. But um, he, you know, comes out and introduces himself. I call him Ollie Ollie Octopus. And he comes out and sings this song and then I have little fish finger puppets that he chomps and eats. Um, and it's hilarious. And I did a whole live video on that uh, song and that story too. So if you're interested, that's also linked in the notes. But um, it's, it's like one of my faves. The kids think it's so hilarious. They love seeing the octopus eat the fish. And then by the end of the lesson, each kid has a little fish finger puppet on their finger that they have a pretend octopus that will come and grab. So like they love doing that. They think it's so much fun. And if you wanna see that whole lesson, the whole process with uh, the finger puppets and the big octopus puppet as well as, well as a visual, um, that is um, in, in the video links. Or you can always go to my video archive either on Facebook or on YouTube, it's there too. Um, first grade, we do, well, we're, pre we're preparing for our farm concert and that's in March. Um, so we're not, I haven't really said the word concert or anything like that with first or second grade, but instead what I'm doing is I'm just setting them up with all the songs that when it comes time for the concert, I'll just say, remember this song and this song and this song and this song, <laughs> all these songs, they're all farm songs. Maybe you haven't noticed that, but that's on purpose. <laughs> that's what our, that's what our concert's about. So um, for this concert, the um, we, we do a couple songs in this lesson. The first one is Old Dog Full of Fleas, which I talked about in the last video, and I pull out my Basset Hound puppet. Um, actually, that was in the, sorry, two videos ago. Um, and he, we do that song. We've added in some actions, and, and they get a chance to howl like the Basset Hound, which is adorable. Uh, this is the first week that we learned the song Farmer Brown. Uh, Farmer Brownie had a cow, had a cow, had a cow. She got sick, I don't know how, and all she said was moo. It's a cute little song. And that one I know is available online. I haven't tracked down the sheet music yet. Um, I actually have the sheet music for that in a book by Lynn Kleiner um, called Farm Songs, and it's a fantastic book. Anything by Lynn Kleiner is great. She's um, the brain behind Music Rhapsody, and I mean, everything she shares is great, but this book especially, I pulled a bunch of songs out for the farm concert, um, and it's it's a great, great book. But in that song, all of the animals from the barnyard bring something to the cow to try and make her feel better, so the, the pig brings chocolate cake, and the hen brings an egg to see if it will help her leg, and uh, the sheep brings... Um, I can't even remember what she brings, something um, to help with pain or help with her, you know, it's all different stuff that the animals bring and the kids think that's hilarious. And I had a, pu I had a puppet problem today. Um, one, one of the problems is I had all the puppets for each of the animals except the hen. And then I realized I have a puppet problem because my first inclination was like, well, I better go buy that hen. <laughs> it's not, it is not good, but um, I did not buy the hen today. I may eventually. I already have one saved on my Amazon wish list. So um, if you want to see my Amazon wish list with all my favorite puppets, I have that too. But it's it's dangerous because there are too many good puppets on there. And then the last song we learned was um, Down on Grandpa's Farm. Uh, down on Grandpa's Farm there was a little red hen. Down on Grandpa's Farm there was a little red hen. It's a fun song. Um, and it has um, a chance for kids to sing what the what the animal says. Um, the hen, she makes a sound like this. Bark, bark, bark. The hen, she makes a sound like this. Bark, bark, bark. And then it goes, we're on our way. We're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's farm. We're on our way. We're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's farm. It's a charming little song. Um, I just do a piano accompaniment. But in this lesson, we get to choose. I, I intro two different animals, and then they get to choose what... Um, what other animals we bring in. Now, in the last time I talked about first grade, I mentioned that we were gonna do Old MacDonald, and that's really very similar in structure because it has an animal and then the sound, right, that they, that they say. So what I'm planning on doing is Old MacDonald is eventually gonna morph into, um, Old MacDonald had some instruments, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a triangle with a ding-ding here and a ding-ding there, and so then I'll have kids with triangles and then, you know, wood blocks or tambourines or whatever. So then that song really will not be a singing like bok bok moo moo. It'll be uh, instruments coming out and kids playing in place of the animal sounds. So Down on Grandpa's Farm becomes our animal sound song. 
and um, Old MacDonald is our instrument exploration song, which will hopefully be very fun and worked the last time I tried to do it, so we'll hope it'll work for this concert too. Second grade, um, we're preparing for our, our uh, underwater concert, our fish concert, and um, this one, again, I'm not really mentioning that there's a concert coming up, I will eventually, but for now, it, it takes the stress out for me and the stress out for them when we don't really think about it that way. We just sort of are learning songs. So the first song is another song from Lynn Kleiner, an amazing song called Larry the Lobster. And this song is on her book, um, SOS, Songs of the Sea. And I love it. It's a great little song. It, the, the, um, the track on there that I like using for practice with kids. Uh, the, the only thing about it is that the kids on the track sound very young and my second graders are like this is a baby song so that's what happened in my first class so the second time i introed it with second grade i said you know what there's a really cool song and i love it so much and just so you know the kids on the song sound very young but actually i think they might be second graders but they sound a little young okay let's try it so we learned the song and then we tried it with the track and the second time when i when I preface the track with, there's this really amazing, oh, it's such a great song, I love this song, but act, there are some kids who sound younger. When I preface it like that, they don't freak out. They don't react like, oh, it's a baby song. They go, yeah, that's a good song. I like the instruments. The kids sound a little young. Like they, they're prepared for it, and so then their reaction is a lot better. Uh, in the last song we did, um, Eyes of I, the in the last lesson, Eyes of I that built the boat, which is a song from Newfoundland, a uh, fun little folk song. So in this one, we just make sure we've got all the words. They actually remembered it really well. Uh, and then we add in some fun actions. So what we're gonna do, this is the song that my plan, hopefully, <laughs> is that one, three classes will be out to really perform this one for the concert. One will do sort of a folk dance action. Uh, one will have a parachute and one will be doing a stretchy band. I don't know if that's going to happen and materialize, but that's my ultimate plan. And um, in, in this lesson, we learn the folk dance, beginning folk dance option. And uh, basically, it's just there with a partner. And by the end, they're going to be promenading around in a circle, which is, for them at this point, is um, it's a task, but we're doing great. And then I have a, a silly little pirate song we do at the end, and they learn the B section of that this week. Okay, I'm going to skip third grade because I'm coming back to that one in just a minute, but let me do fourth grade. Uh, fourth and fifth, again, and in the last, last video where I talked about all my lessons, I sort of explained this. We got a grant for ukuleles at the, the end of last year, and because of concerts and everything else, we weren't able to start them until right now. <clears throat> and so my fourth and fifth grade lessons are very, very much the same. If I had done ukuleles last year with the fourth graders, they would be doing advanced ukulele things, but they didn't. And so fourth and fifth are sort of running the same lesson plans where fifth is sort of just taking a little bit quicker because they're picking up just a tiny bit faster. But we're doing basically the same thing. In this lesson, we um, t you know we talk about the things we notice about the ukulele, what, what, is it ha what are elements about it, and the neck, the, the head, the body, the tuning pegs, all that. We talk about all that before they ever get a ukulele in their hand. We talk about good things and bad things. Bad being don't retune the tuners, uh, the tuning pegs. Uh, good things, how to strum, where to put your hands, all of that. We do all of that before we get a ukulele in our hand <clears throat> because it'd probably fall apart if not. So um, we, we talk about all that. We go, we talk about how to get the instrument. There's just a lot of procedure these first couple times how to get the instrument, how to take it back to your spot, yada, yada, yada. We do that, and once we get back to our spot, I have the chord chart up on the smart board, and they, they play C, we strum a little bit, we do down strum, up strum, alternating down and up strumming, and then we have um, our C fingering for the C chord. And then in this lesson, we learn an F chord. And I'm using the little dots, and <clears throat> you can buy a really fun colorful little dots for the neck of your ukulele and I have dots on there so they're it's it's a lot easier to put your fingers on when you have the dots in the right places um so it's it's really a process to get there because we we do C and we learned C in the last lesson so that feels familiar in this lesson we're adding the F chord um and then my goal is to slowly get them to start doing um C to F transitions, which is super duper tricky. 
And so it takes a lot of, okay, you're playing C, great, now stop, let go, let's put down our F chord. So put your first finger on this dot, put your second finger on this dot, great, now strum. And it's slowly, 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 slowly speeding that up. That's, that's the idea. So for example, um, one of the songs I do is um, Chicken on a Fence Post, which both fourth and fifth grade have done before with ORF instruments with the folk dance. It is almost, well, in this lesson, I do almost all the same chord. Um, and so they, for the first three lines, we just do chicken on a fence post can't dance Josie, chicken on a fence post can't dance Joe, chicken on a fence post can't dance Josie, stop. Okay, switch to the next chord. Hello, Susan. Okay, hold on. Now switch to the next one, switch back. Brownie, oh great, that was so good. Okay, and then we try off. We, or we try it all again, okay? Da -da -da. Just maybe a little bit quicker. And say, great, now this time, let's do two chords per line. Because I, I have the lines up on the, on the board. Chicken on a fence post, can't dance Josie. Chicken on a fence post, can't dance Joe. Chicken on a fence post, can't dance Josie. Switch. Hello, Susan. Brownie, and we're getting, I mean, we're getting there, but it's just, it's a slowly, slowly, slowly speed up. And by the time we're read, really ready for it, <clears throat> they're really ready for it. And then to, to round out the lesson, there's a fun video on YouTube, um, uh, Best Day of My Life. It's tuned down into, onto C, and I think it's actually slowed down a little bit. Um, and I can post a, a link to that if you want, but it's a play along, and all they have to do is play the C and the F chord, and it's fun because they, um, they can sort of anticipate getting, you know, when, when the chords change and doing all that. And they're doing really, really well. So, um, so far so good. Hoping to introduce another chord in the next lesson and, and see how that goes. I saw a couple questions here I wanna just quickly answer before I jump into third grade. Um, okay, you, you asked how are your do-it-yourself picks holding up? I have not introduced picks. Honestly, at this point, it's lesson two with ukuleles and we're still just strumming with our finger. I probably wanna introduce those for several more lessons because you don't use picks as often with ukulele, if at all. And so I want them to get the strumming part down first because one of the things I've noticed is as much as, you know, I say strum with your thumb, strum with your thumb, we're strumming with our thumb, we're strumming with our thumb and we're doing great, okay? Strumming with it. There's still kids who are trying to like play it like a harp. <laughs> and so it's a lot of going back and saying, use your thumb, use your thumb, use your, and, and getting that so that every time they strum, they get all four strings. Every time they strum up, they get all four strings. So that. I'm gonna do that before I even get to the do-it-yourself picks, which I, I, I sort of, it, it, Facebook, if you've not been on my Instagram, I, I did a, I, I created my own picks out of felt and stiffened them up with Elmer's glue and I put that whole process on Instagram if you wanna see that. Um, but the picks were pretty cheap and easy to make. The ones that I have been using have been holding up just fine. I don't know how they're gonna react in student hands, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, I said, someone else on Instagram said, uh, keyword, keyword here, process. Yeah, it's a, it's a process and it's scaffolding and it's getting, getting them from something they're comfortable to do to more difficult, to more difficult, to more difficult. Um, and then do you take the dots off each week? Nope. I leave the dots on. For now, I'm okay with them having the dots. I mean, it's the second time they've ever touched a ukulele. So yes, I'm going to give them supports. That is scaffolding. Eventually, I'll take the dots off. But for now, no. Fourth and fifth grade, they need the dots. I see, uh, Last fall, last semester, I saw my students 11 times. So I, I don't have the repetition where they're ready to take those off yet. So I leave all of those on. Plus also it'd be a pain to get all those off and then try to pick them off the floor or whatever because you know kids would take them off. Um, okay, so uh, that was K through five minus third grade and I wanna share with you third grade now. Uh, fun story. So, you know, anytime I know that I'm going to share about a lesson on a Musical Mondays, I, I really look through it and check and make sure my process is good and, and try and think about all of the steps and things. I did that for this lesson. I even, re I looked at it again this morning because, you know, I'd, I'd been gone on Friday. I went to um, Missouri Music Educator, so I was just, you know, refreshing in my mind. And um, I looked through it, I'm, and I'm glad I did because, well, first of all, I thought the lesson went really well today in class. And as the third graders were sitting down, we're about to do attendance before we jumped into the lesson, in walks my assistant principal. She had decided that this would be the surprise observation that she was gonna throw into my observation cycle. So I was like, hooray, I'm so glad that 
<laughs> that I intentionally went back and looked at everything and like really thought through the process because now this is an evaluation. So I'm glad that it went really well. Um, and I thought, perfect, I can share it with all of y'all. Um, so anyway, uh, this lesson is a really fun one and it's one that I really look forward to doing every year um, because it it's the first time that kids really create the notes themselves. And, and I wanted to just share that process of how I did that. So actually it doesn't start with that. It actually starts with them coming in. We do echo singing. They learned fa not too far in the past. So we, you know, add the solfege, all the solfege we know. Right now for third grade, we know do, re, mi, fa, so, la. T will come next and then do. But um, fa was the most recent one that we added in. So we do a little bit of singing with that just to sort of refresh it so that I don't have to, you know, in four weeks or whatever, when I do a more intensive lesson on it, I don't have to just reteach everything. So this is just a real quick jump in through that. And then we do attendance and let me grab my ukulele here. Um, we do attendance and um, then we get ready to sing Old Brass Wagon. In the last lesson we did, um, we did Old Brass Wagon, we did verses one, two, and three. And if you're not familiar with Old Brass Wagon, it's a great folk song. Um, it goes like this, circle to the left, old brass wagon, circle to the left, old brass wagon, circle to the left, old brass wagon, you're the one, my darling. Super fun song. Um, and the way we did it in the last class, I had them just make a class size circle. We took hands, we circled to the left, we learned circle to the right, and we learned in and out. If you watched last week's video, you saw that whole process. So basically what I did today, I said, what's the first thing we do? And they said, circle to the left. Right, I'm so glad you remember that. Okay, let's sing and do it. So we walked around, well actually no, sorry, let me step back. Before we even got there, I said, I was just re remembering what we did last week and then jumped right in too fast. What I actually did today, uh, the kids came in, they sat down, my assistant principal walked in, we did attendance, we did solfege, and then I said, I need you to stand up, they all stood up, and now I need you to find a partner. They found their partners, that took us, you know, 30 seconds, it takes them a while to do that. And then, uh, luckily it worked out that today that it was an even number, so they all had partners. If not, I would have become someone's partner. So I said, now we're gonna make our class size circle and in that circle, you need to be next to your partner. So you're next to your partner in the big class circle. Okay, that I just wanna set that up because that comes back later. So then, then we did our circle to the left, then we did our circle to the right, then we did our in and out. I said, now we get to learn a new part. Turn and face your partner. So if you, if you say, you know, you need a partner first. They have that in their head when they go to the circle. Otherwise, if you've done the first three verses and then you say, now find a partner, it's it's chaos. You have to remake your circle, all of that. But if they have their partner beforehand, it saves you some time. So the new verse we learned was swing your partner. I didn't say that initially. I said, look at your partner. I said, shake hands with your right hand. They shook. Shake hands with your left hand, they shook. We had to, of course, like do the thing where you turn and look at the board, hold up your right hand, hold up your left hand. Because up next, above my board, I have um, a big square poster that says R, and there's a hand. And then I know on L, there's a hand. And um, so, so they know which is their right and which is their left. So we did that. We walked, you know, we turned back to look at our partners. I said, now, this time after you've shaken their right hand, instead of shaking, you're going to reach past their hand instead of shaking, and you're going to link up your arm. And I just, I do that because, I do the handshaking thing first because I found that if they're successful the handshaking, they'll do right arm to right arm. And if they do, if they're good, then they'll also do left arm to left arm instead of doing right arm to left arm where they're both like facing the same direction. That happens sometimes. And I feel like if you do the shaking thing first, most kids can shake easy. And then you just say, put your, keep your hand going and then link up. I don't know, that works for me, maybe it won't work for you. Sorry, with my ukulele. So that's what we do first, and so then I have them link up, and I say, great, now walk around your partner and back to your spots. They walk around the back to your spot, great. Okay, now, if you are gentle and calm with your partner and are nice to your partner, you may skip gently around and back to your spots. They skip, and they're obviously not gentle because they're so excited. So then I say, great. If you skip so fast that one of the partners flies off and into outer space, 
you have to sit down and you don't get to have partners anymore. So that, that sort of prefaces the, because if you just say link arms and spin around, they're going to go super hyper speed and one person's going to like fly off into, you know, the drums or whatever. So instead I start walking and then we do skipping and then as things go, they get a little bit more excited and that's okay. But if I preface them with, you know, quiet, gentle first, they move into the raucous with the gentle part still a little bit in their head. So... Uh, so we do swing your partner, We and I say, okay, this is called swing your partner. So when we sing, we'll go, swing your partner, old brass wagon, swing your partner, old brass wagon, swing your partner, old brass wagon, you're the one, my darling. They do the whole thing. So then, and then I say, you know what? That was so great. Can, and they had their right arms linked. Can you do it with your left arms linked? So you swing your partner, old brass, then you go the other direction. I say, now, you're gonna do it with your right arm linked, except when you hear the bell, and I have a little chime, when you hear the bell, you're going to switch from your right hand to your left. Let's see if you can do it. So I go, swing your partner, old brass wagon, swing your partner, old brass wagon, ding. They switch, I give them a second. Swing your partner, old brass wagon, you're the one, my darling. They're good. And I say, this time, this is our last time, I'm not going to stop in the middle. When you hear the bell, you just have to switch. Ready? Here we go. And so I just do that so that they know that they can switch in the middle. And the bell makes it easy on the way, along the way to getting there so that eventually they'll just be able to sort of switch on their own. Okay. So that's, that's the process for Swing Your Partner. And I say, I have one more fun thing to do today. Oh, it's so exciting. And I, I go over, I say, can I borrow your partner? And then I take someone out to be an example with me. And we stand facing each other. We're eventually going to do -si do So I say, great, okay, new partner, you stay right there. Don't move. And then I walk, I say, watch this. I walk past him. I scoot over to the side. I walk back. I can even check over my shoulder to make sure I'm not going to run into him. But I don't turn around. But I just look. My body is going to be facing this direction the whole time. Watch again. And I walk forward. I move over to the side. I walk back. I say, great. Now watch this. I'm going to walk forward and over to the side and back. At the same time, my partner is going to walk forward past me to his side and then back. It's going to be amazing. And of course, the kid who didn't know he was going to be my partner is like, <laughs> I hope I get it. And so if, if that ever happens where the kid gets a little bit nervous, I always say, don't worry, we're going to be great. And so I sometimes will even reach out and say, like, great, and now scoot over. And I sort of scoot him over or scoot her over and then bring them back. And I say, this is a do -si do And so when we do -si do you're going to do that same thing. Your body never switches direction. You'll go either forward, side, and back. But you'll always be looking the same way. Your body will be facing the same way. You can look over your shoulder to make sure you don't knock into anyone. But your body's going to be facing the same way. And so... Then we try it super slow. We do it all together. I say, great, face your partner and I'll tell you when. Okay, and walk forward. They walk, 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 stop, good. Move to the side, okay. And now you can check, make sure you don't run into anyone. Walk slowly backwards, great. And then they try it and they they usually do pretty well. If they don't, we do it again. Because doing it out of time and just sort of practicing gives them the chance to figure out the steps in the process. Then, once we've done it like twice, I say, great, now, if you want, there are two different things you can choose from. You can either walk past your partner like this, walk over to the side and walk back, great, or if you want to do it the super fancy way, you can put your hands up like this and you can walk past your partner, walk over to the side and walk back. I never have them do this first. In fact, I don't, I don't ever make them do that, but I never even show them this is an option until I know they can do it because if their hands are like this and they try and go around their partner and have a little wobble, they will fall over. But if their hands are like this, they can sort of catch them, you know, they can sort of balance themselves better. But, if, you know, if their hands are like this, they're more apt to just fall over. So I have them do it just normal first. And then when they're ready for the fancy version, they can do it this way if they want, if they want. But they also have the option just to do it the normal way. Um, I learned a few years ago at a, a state music education um, conference from the fabulous Martha Riley that nobody really does this. <laughs> like, I mean, not originally. It was always just like, you know, walk around your partner. And this is like just sort of happened at some point. But this is not really 
Appalachian Mountain style. I mean, it's not it's not like folk dancey style originally from the American Heritage, but it sort of just happened. And I trust her. She's a she's a really wonderful source. So we then we put it all together. We do circle to the left, old brass wagon, circle to the right, old brass wagon, in and out, old brass wagon, brass wagon, swing your partner, old brass wagon, and then do si do, old brass wagon. And we do all five in a row. I usually, I, I love to be able to step back, but I act as the caller. So when they're getting to the end of the verse, you're the one, my darling. When they sing darling, I go, you're the one, my circle right, circle right. Old brass wagon, you know, so then you're the one, my in and out, in and out, old brass wagon. And then, so I'm sort of the caller to remind them what comes next because it's a, it's a lot for them to remember, um, to do the actions and the movement and the, and the sequence. And so I help them out with that part. Sometimes I'll play ukulele. Sometimes I'm dancing with them, but no matter what, it, it ends up being a really, really fun, uh, start to the lesson. And then eventually if we want at a later date or a later grade, we can add the last step, which is promenade, or you can add in any dance that you want. Um, I mean, you could add in right hand star, you could do right hand turn, you could, I mean, anything that you really want. That's the cool thing about this song. And about all folk songs is that there is no one right way to do it. With, with every folk song I have ever looked at, I have found at least two versions. I mean, and that's, you know, of the words or the action of the dance. So, I mean, it's very, very um, customizable. And that, that's one of the things that happen with folk songs. They just changed over the years. And then that, that's part of what makes it a folk song is that when it was taught through oral tradition, it was just changed to, to, meet, each, um, to, meet, each, to meet each setting. So if you change it and add in your own action, that's okay. That's great. Um, but, but in my lesson, we stopped with uh, do si do I see someone saying, uh, love your process, teaching this again this week, cool. Uh, I've heard too that you don't do the arms up for do si do, cool. Uh, do you accompany them on guitar or use recorded music for Old Brass Wagon? I don't have recorded music for Old Brass Wagon, so no. We either sing it a cappella or I play on the ukulele. Sometimes I'll sit down at the piano if I want, but usually, um, I'm dancing with someone. Usually I have an odd number in this grade for some reason. So I'm either dancing with a ukulele playing every once in a while or just dancing or playing ukulele full time. But but uh, no to the guitar and, uh, cause also I think I do this one in F. So that's an F chord and a C. And for me, that's easier on the ukulele than the guitar. So that's what I go with. Okay, cool. And this one I do third grade. Um, Christy just asked, and I think you could do um, circle to the left, circle to the right, in and out um, on just, uh, I mean, you could do those first three verses with maybe first or second grade, and then when you get to third or fourth grade, you could do the swing your partner, do si do, and then maybe fourth or fifth, do promenade, um, but I think that, you know, it, it's a song that you can cycle through your curriculum, you can spiral it through, so you bring it back. But I don't know that I would do Swing Your Partner or do si do with anything younger than third grade just because that's tricky. So um, anyway, so then after that, we sit down into personal spaces and I say, you know, last time we went to the Note neighborhood and I want to just see what you remember. So I hold up these cards. And I know they're backwards. Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, in a second, I'm going to flip the screens around so you can see them a little better and you can see them the right way. But I say, you know what, what is this note? And they raise their hand, they say, that's Ta, right. And if, if we wanted to use its fancy name, the name that works at any school, because at some schools they say Ta, at some schools they say Do. And, and so, you know, what's the fancy word that works at any, uh, any school, no matter where you go? And they say, oh, it's a quarter note. Right, and there it is over on the vocabulary wall. And I always make a, a point to, to point it out. I always intentionally try and point that out for students to see. Great. So then we go through and we read it. Okay, awesome. Wait, how about this one? What's this one? We say toddy. Yeah, this is toddy. Perfect. And and what's the word, the fancy word that you can use, the vocabulary word that works at any school? And they look, they say eighth notes. Eighth notes. That's right. Okay, great. And so we read those. Great. Different order. Okay, different order again. Um, oh, what's this one? They say, it's the ta rest, you're right. 
and a rest is a beat of sound or a beat of silence. A rest is a beat of silence. Okay, and so I've gone through this, all, all this and other lessons. We find it with a quarter rest, all of that. Um, we go through the sassy half note, perfect. So then it's just a half note, really. It's two beats, right? Okay, so we go through, we do that. There's the rest again. There's the sassy half note with the rest. <laughs> so this just takes a few minutes to go, go through. And if there's nothing new in the card, I don't stop to talk about it. I just, you know, have them read through it. King Hall note, that's a little bit of rem remembering from last year, um, but we talk about that, the four beats of sound, we find it, we do all that. Oh, the hat, that's the half rest. This is all part of the storyline that goes with the Note Neighborhood, which I've shared about before. And Note Neighborhood really just gives a backstory to each of these note values, but it, it really helps them remember them a lot better and how the notes function. So when I started using a hat, the sassy halves, the sassy half notes hat. There's the sassy half note. When I started using it as her hat, they remembered it was two beats of silence. Before, it, it, I don't know. The way I was teaching it just didn't work. And for some reason, adding a narrative about it being her hat and if she gets two beats, this gets two beats, it worked for them. So I have those stories. Um, those are all in my TPT store. And so are these cards. But I think these are part of the bundle, actually. So we go through all of that. We do all that. Great. We finally get to... Takadimi, which is what we did in the last lesson. Um, and so I said, great, so we do Takadimi Ta, Takadimi Ta, and what's its fancy name? What's well, 16th notes, okay. We go through, we do several of these, and then I say, you know, th not everybody knows the note neighbors, but a lot of people know the notes, because the note neighbors, well, they're really just notes, and they don't always wear their costumes. Sometimes you might see them like this, and it's just a, a basic set of uh, rhythm cards. And I say, but you know what? Even without their costumes, I bet you can read and know each one. So let's see. ta di ta ka dee ta di ta ka dee I use the ta ka dee counting system. I've done a whole blog post about why, but um, that's just the way we do it. And, and so that's why, if you're not familiar with this counting system, um, that's what that is. So we read through several of these. You know, they love this one. All <laughs> 16 notes, they love it. So, um, but the point is to get them to see that you know, you can look at it with their costumes on, you can look at it with just normal with notation. And then I say, you know, there's another way that we've done this. Let me see. And this is gonna take me a second to set up because normally I would just go to my whiteboard, but I don't have my whiteboard today. So instead, I brought my whiteboard with me. Um, and I'm gonna just quick flip around the screens so that y'all can see this better. So let me see if I can do this here. So it's just going to take me a second to set this up so y'all can see this. Okay, and for the record, when I'm doing this, I'm not going to be able to see if it's working. So if it cuts out, I am so very sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, and there's a glare. Okay, so we're gonna see if we can make this work. All right, thanks for coming along. <laughs> just letting me make this sort of change and see if this works. All right, let me move y'all back just a little bit Instagram. Walk into my home office. Okay, so then I go to the board. and So I was just saying, you know, we talk about how the note neighbors, you can see them like this. You could see them without their costumes. The point is that you can um, do notes in a couple different ways and you, they still know what it is. And I talk about how the last time they were here, we did notes like this with the popsicle sticks. And so that is what, it's a ta, it's a quarter note. You're right, great. And then if I go like this, that would be what? And they say it's a ta di, right, it's the eighth notes. Okay, let's see, what if I do this? Oh wait, no, what if I do this? And they say, oh, that's 16th notes. Yes, perfect. Okay, well today, today we're gonna actually create the notes on our own. And we're not gonna use sticks. Today we're gonna use something else. We're gonna use whiteboards. And here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna get a whiteboard, you're gonna get an eraser, and you're gonna get a marker. And you get to take those back to your spots and you're gonna get to make your own notes and rest. And we're gonna do that together. So a couple things, I have these 
they're called lap boards or I don't know there's I think there's another word for it but it's just a little mini whiteboard if you don't want to buy them from a catalog which they're not super duper expensive and they're pretty durable if you don't want I know people who have gone to Home Depot and bought whiteboard and had them cut it up like they bought a big big one and they had them just cut it down to size that's an option I love a good DIY um, I would not skimp on markers the off-brand do not work as well as Expo brand the Expo just lasts forever I, I don't know what it is my grandma always used to say never buy off-brand tuna or peanut butter and I'm gonna add or dry erase markers <laughs> I don't know it's just, anyway they work better so and then I know you can also buy these um, fun little mini erasers um, I'm sure you could make your own of these it's just a little piece of wood with some felt on the back I know you could make your own but um, I go to the Dollar Tree and I buy these they're facial cleansing pads you get them three to a pack three to a dollar three for a dollar multiple colors uh, pink, green, blue, and purple. And these work really well for dry erase markers for um, this specific setting. And one of the cool things you can do um, is when they get really gross and dirty like these are, you just toss them in your washer. Or you can hand wash them or whatever, but um, they, they clean up really well. Okay, I'm gonna just check and make sure these videos are still working. Great, okay, it looks like they're starting working. Um, okay, cool. And now let's talk about how I make the notes. Oh, and someone said socks also work well for um, for uh, erasing, it looks like. And clear paper protectors for in, in place of whiteboards. Cool. Uh, they also make the dry erase pockets that are really cool. And I showed that, I think, on the last video. I thought I had one here, maybe two, but I'll see if I can find it. But those dry erase pockets are really cool, too. All right, so... When kids have their marker and eraser, and, and for the record, when I'm passing them out, just a procedure thing, I have the dry erase boards in one place, and I say, just come grab one. They are all exactly the same, so it doesn't matter which one you get. And then I say, you get to take a whiteboard, you get to take an eraser, and then I'll hand you a marker, and you can go back to your spot. If I give them the choice of choosing a marker, it will be like smackdown death match for that like one purple marker or whatever but if i'm standing there going here you go here you go you get what you get don't be upset then they just take one and go but if if they're if it's their choice you're going to add about four minutes to your lesson so I, I just don't give them that choice so once they get back um you know i'm standing there handing out markers and i say as soon as you get back to your spot you can write your name on your board um and so they do that and they come you know they write their name up here great okay and I say, now make sure that your board looks like this. You want it to be side like this, not up and down like this. You want it side to side. Okay. I always have to make sure that that's something kids do before we start. So the first thing you need to do when you're going to make a note is you're going to make this part. We call it the stem. So you're going to make the stem. It's really a line. It's sort of like when we made, you know, we took our stick. But that's the same thing. The first thing you're going to do is that. That's it. And then you add a little oval here. Perfect. And when you make your oval, you want it to look like the letter D. Oh, it doesn't look like a very good D. You want it to look like the letter D. You don't want it to look like a letter B. No Bs allowed. And I actually have a little paper plate that looks like a bubble bee, and I have an X on the top of it. And I'm like, see, no Bs allowed. And they're like, ha ha ha. Okay, but then actually, it just gets them so that they don't do the note backwards, but I, I use that, and that, that actually works really well. Um, so uh, they do their, their oval there, and I say, now can you stop there? And eventually they go, no, because if we stop there, it's the sassy half note. <gasps> right, it's the sassy half note, and we don't want her here yet, so let's color that in. Great, okay. Perfect, and then you're done. So stem, oval, colored in. Let's see, we should make two more. Make two more with me. So you've got your stem, your oval, and then you color it in. Does it have to be colored in exactly perfectly? And they're like, no, good. So you know there's that like one girl who's doing this. Or boy, whoever, who's like trying to make it perfect. I don't want that. <laughs> okay, so then, so great, you should have three, you should have your stem, your oval, and then color it in, great. 
And so then I make sure they've all done that. I'm sort of filtering around, you know, to check to see that they're making the, you know, they're doing the D's, not B's, and they're um, filling it all in. And then sometimes I'll have a kid who'll do that because he heard me say D, and I'll say, you know what, good, but we don't need that little tail. And then it's fixed. Great. Now, guess what? You all get a choice. We're going to add a line on top. We call that a bar. You can add in a bar here, so you can have a ta, ta, di, or you can decide to put the bar here, so you can make a ta, di, ta. You choose. And so then I walk around, you know, they're doing their thing, they're checking, you know, they're going through, and I'm checking, I'm walking around to make sure, um, again, just checking in with the kids. Great, so now you made a ta, di, and that's all you have to do. So when you make a ta, di, really, you're making two ta's, you make your stem, you make your oval, you color it in, you make another ta, stem, oval, color it in, and then put a bar on top. Easy peasy. All you have to do is bar it together. Great. So you've got your toddy, your toddy, your toddy. Okay, cool. Now, don't tell your classroom teacher. You've got to promise me you won't tell her I'm letting you do this because if she finds out, I'm going to get in such trouble because here, I'll just show you. When, when you're in your classroom, she wants you to use your very best handwriting, right? And, and if you're going to make a Z, if you're going to spell Xander's name, you'd need to make your Z sort of like that. But I am going to let you on purpose make the Z incorrectly. You can make a slanty Z like this, sort of like a lightning bolt. Slanty Z. Ah, oh, I love that. Sl That's a fun slanty Z. Ah, oh, I love it. Say, so, but don't tell your homeroom teacher because I'm going to be in trouble. But then look on the bottom of your slanty Z, and I'm going to use another marker just so you can see it better. On the bottom of the slanty Z, we're going to add the letter C. And if you add a C to a slanty Z, what do you have? And they go, it's a rest. Oh my gosh, you're exactly right. So watch, I can do it all together. I can do slanty Z, and without bringing my marker up, I add a C, and it's done. Perfect. And so then I let them try. They do a couple different rests. Easy peasy. All right, so the next part of the lesson, you know, again, I wander around, make sure they're doing it. I say, make two or three more. And, that, you know, the kids who are zooming ahead, they can make as many as they want. The kids who need help, I can stop and help them. Great, so the next thing we need to do is to make a sassy half note. I want to see if you can do it even on your own. You're so good at this now, I want to see if you can do it. Most of the kids figure out that all you have to do is the stem and the oval and just not color it in because that actually was a step from before. <laughs> but there are a couple kids who need lead, lead to that. Um, so anyway, we get to you know the stem and the circle and just don't color it in. And I say, you know what? Now I'm going to give you another challenge. See if you can make king hall note all on your own. See if you can figure it out. And the kids go, ha, huh, perfect. Yeah, so he has no stem. That's all you have to do is just the oval. That's great. Okay, now we need to make their rests. You know, and again, I'm just, I'm zooming through and checking. I'm walking around checking with each kid, you know, but I'm rushing because you don't need to see me sit, stand here and go, great, make another one. <laughs> but with kids, this would go slower. So if you're going to make the half rest, we're going to make her half. The first thing is you make a line. Ooh, that was a bad line. Sorry. I'm sort of on, on my whiteboard at school. I'd be a little bit better than that. Great. You make a line. On top of the line, you get to put a rectangle. We've been making ovals, but now you get to make a rectangle. Great. You make your rectangle. It looks like a pretty good hat, but it's not like the sassy half note. You have to color this one in. It's another one where you have to fill it in. So then you fill in the rectangle just like that, and you're done. It's so great. Good. Try it on your own. And so then they try that a little bit. And then I say, let's make a whole rest. And guess what? It's the same thing. It's a line. And then you make the rectangle beneath the line, under the line, because now it looks like a hole in the ground you might fall into, just like when King Hall Note was, you know, trying to walk through the construction zone. Remember, he fell in, and then the time he tried to build his pool, I'm referencing these stories we've done in the note neighborhood, and that helps them recall a little bit. And then you have to fill that one in too. Okay, great. Okay, fantastic, so that, that's another step. The last step is getting them to do 16th notes. And the way I do that is I say, okay, you're gonna make two sets of toddy. Let's try. So we make our stem, we make our oval, we color it in. We make our stem, we make our oval, we color it in, and then put the bar on top. Great, let's do it again. Stem, oval, color it in. Stem, oval, color 
it in. And put the bar on top. Great. And the last time we sort of talked about this, but um, we're going to let you try it, kids. Because remember we said, with toddy and toddy, if you want, you can put the bar across the top, the beam across the top, and you could put them together. And you still have toddy, toddy. You don't have a 16th note yet. You still have toddy, toddy, because look, I could take it away, and it's still toddy, toddy. But if you wanted to make takadini, remember you have to have the second note, uh, or the second line on top, because you can sort of see that four square court, right? If you can't see the four square court, it's not takadini. And so they have to go through that process and make it. That's as far as we go in this lesson. So then I say, all right, it, you know, if we do have a few minutes left, and usually we have a couple, I say, I'm gonna give you a pattern and you get to create it. Because we did this with sticks, now they're just doing the same exact process with this. And I usually say, here I go. Ta, takadini ta. Or no, I usually do, I try and get another note in there. I say ta di, takadini ta. That's four different things. So then they have to make, I'll do it really quickly. Ta di. It's really hard not to do just the tops first. I, I keep trying to do the process that I teach the kids. So they do it. So it's like note, stem, or yeah, uh, stem, oval, color, stem, head, color. In. And I, I do stop saying oval with the kids. I usually say note, head, because that matches each one of their heads. And so kids get that, the note, head. And then the end is a, is a ta. Now, a couple things I usually see kids do. Usually the first time kids, when they're doing takadini, will do that. They'll do four um, with, with no second bar. So obviously I have to remind them to do that. Also, a lot of times I'll see kids do this and I go, hmm, not takadini, it's takadi. What's missing? And they go, me, duh. Okay, and so then they go and they add it in. But usually I just go over and I say, hmm, this is all good, that's good, that's good, that's great. But wait, there's something wrong with this one. And, and I let them figure it out. I don't go, you're missing one. But I say, ah, what's missing here? And I let them sort of look through because almost every time they can go, uh, you know, they, they notice. A lot of times kids will try and do this. I'll say, oh, there's something wrong. And they'll try and go to erase. I'll say, no, 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 don't erase. See if you can fix it. Because some kids, oh, I hate, they're just whoosh, erase the whole thing. I don't, I don't want them to, to go there. I mean, that's one of the reasons I use dry erases so they can erase and fix, but I don't want them to erase it. I want them to, to try and fix it. So then they fix it and then they go on. This is, it's a super fun lesson for me. I love doing it with kids and it's almost always successful. Um, and this is a great time where you can really go around and check with all the students um, as you go. It, it's sort of um, a, a great way to, to check because you can give them a task. Okay, now make toddy. Make, make three more toddies, and then you can walk around and check with each kid. Let me flip this around really quick, because I know we're sort of running out of time. So um, that's sort of how I introduce, you know, really creating the actual notes, um, the standard notation. And we do actually, with the kids, I talk about the note neighborhood. And then I say, and now stick notation, and also standard notation. We talk about each one of those things. Um, so they sort of have those ideas in their head that there are multiple ways to make the notes and this is the one that we landed on today. And it's so much fun. They love using whiteboards. They love getting to create. The whiteboards make it so much easier than if you use paper pencil because that's just a scribble mess. But the whiteboards is like whoosh, done, whoosh, ready, on to the next thing. And so if you have the capability of using whiteboards, try it. Okay, let's see. Um, I, real, I really hope these videos are helpful. Some Someone said, oh yeah, these videos are it's fun to see the process someone else uses. Um, yep, those note neighbor cards are in my TPT store. They're with the note neighborhood stuff. Let's see. And then the clear paper protectors, those dry erase pockets, I think is what um, Dee was talking about on, on Facebook. Okay, if you have any other questions or any other ideas, please send me a direct message. Um, like I said, all of the recap notes are on the... Um, the Facebook, or sorry, the Make Moments uh, Musical Mondays live recap page on my blog. And you can find that Instagram on LinkedIn profile. And Facebook, you can find that on the caption for this video. Thanks for much, so much for coming along with me tonight. Um, and I hope you guys have a great week. Hope you stay warm from and inside away from the snow.
by Facebook Live. Have a great week. And I, like you said, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or send me a direct message. I'd love to try and elaborate any more and help you out as much as I can. Have a great night, everyone.